Hi everyone, my name is Pratik Joshi. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be discussing again about the GMAT exam. But today, particularly, we are going to be speaking about the integrated reasoning section, which is the IR section. This is the most ignored section in the whole exam because test takers mostly are focused on getting that uh, 700, 720 score, uh, which mostly deals with the quant and verbal section. But today, I promise you, if you go through this video very carefully, listen to what I say and follow it, you stand a very, very good chance of getting an 8 out of 8 in the IR section. Also, at the end of this video, I'll be giving you a very important tip which you can utilize to get that 8 out of 8 in the IR section. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So the first thing that you need to know about the IR section is that there are a total of 12 questions and a time of only 30 minutes. So basically, you have to answer 4 questions in every 10 minutes. Okay, now this as per your convenience, how you want to answer these questions, if you want to skip any questions, move ahead, or if you find some difficult questions at the start, you can just uh, skip those questions or answer whatever you want and move on to the next question. Now, this question are not like the content verbal sections because here it does not depend on your response. So if your response for the previous question was wrong, the next question will not be adjusted as per that. All these 12 questions are pre-programmed and decided very early uh, compared to when you're starting the exam. So these 12 questions will not change no matter how bad you do or how good you do. Okay, so make best use of that. Now, secondly comes the question that may be uh, popping up in your mind saying that uh, Pratik, what uh, if I miss answering few questions at the end? For example, if you are there on 9th question and your time runs out. So you have not answered uh, question number 10, 11 and 12. So three questions you have not answered at all. So uh, technically now there is not a fixed thing where you lose marks or that's a big disadvantage or something. But I would recommend if you come to know that you are at the very end of your exam, you do not have much time, select submit, go on to the next question, put whatever response you want and move on to the next question. Do not leave your questions empty at least answer something because if luck is on your side then you can get it correct or if not you can get it wrong but as it is if you had skipped them altogether or not answered them they were supposed to be wrong so please please answer at least something put a random response but make sure you answer that question so now comes the question of what exactly does the ir section do so um, if you're a manager after you do your MBA and all that time you need to look at data, you need to look at charts, you need to analyze the trends, what is increasing, decreasing, where you want to invest, where you have to put money. So you have to be very careful with that. And this is exactly what IR section does. It looks at how you are at analyzing patterns, trends, charts, etc. So that is all you need to know for the IR section. So if you have experience as a manager who has uh, dealt with uh, analyzing different data for your company, then the IR section will be much easier for you. But if you are someone who is uh, fresh out from college and is planning to do his MBA without any job experience, then this might be uh, quite a bit of a problem for you because you will have to get into that perspective and that mind shift that you have to understand what is going on how is the data changing what is required how is the trend increasing decreasing stable or what exactly is it so please uh, have that change in perspective and think like a an, uh, manager when you analyze these trends and look at all this data so listening to that you must be thinking that how do i suddenly get this change in perspective so for that the only solution is practice once you practice quite a few sums then you will get into that phase where you analyze everything before doing the calculations you will be looking at the data how is the trend increasing or what or where is the least value where is the highest value and that is what is needed okay so practice is going to help you a lot here so what i will be doing is i will be giving a big tip at the end of this video so stay tuned for that tip there are basically four types of questions that appear in the ir section and today i'm going to be discussing all all four of them in detail to give you an example of what this type of question looks like and how do you answer it so the four types are first one is the two-part analysis second one is the multi-source reasoning third one is table analysis and the fourth one is graphic interpretation 
So let's have a look at all four of these. This is a good example of a two-part analysis question wherein there is sufficient data given and based on the data we have to make two selections for the two questions asked here. Okay, so as you can see I have made two selections for both the choices. Now sometimes one question can be dependent on the answer choice of the other question or sometimes both the questions can be independent so please make sure you are aware of this when you are making the selection this is a very good example of multi-source reasoning question here there are more than two tabs present each tab has a particular amount of data based on the question that is asked in the question tab you need to make a selection for each statement provided on the right hand side so in this case, sometimes all the three statements can have yes as the answer and sometimes all of the three sentences can have no as the answer. So please go through the data before you make the right selection. So this is a classic example of a graphic interpretation problem wherein there are two sub questions given and they have drop down options. So it is very important that you understand the information given in the graphic interpretation here so in this case this is a diagram of set theory so based on the data given in this picture you are supposed to select the answer for both the sub questions if any one of this is wrong then the whole question is wrong so to get the answer to get the question correct you need to answer both the sub questions correct so this question is a classic example of a table analysis here as you can see on the left hand side there is a table given and there is a lot of data given so based on this drop down menu here you can select one of these features and based on your selection the whole table gets sorted so you have to read the question based on the question you have to sort the table in the required manner based on that data you have to answer the question even here so in this case uh, when you get the answer you select the option which is the most appropriate and go ahead so those were the questions that are mostly asked in the IR section now finally we have come to that stage where I am about to give you that important tip which you can use in your IR section which is a special set of 15 questions that every GMAT applicant gets when he registers on MBA.com website when you register on this website, you get um, a practice set of questions available and in that there are 15 questions which belong to the IR section. I promise you if you get these 15 questions correct and by correct uh, I don't mean you answer it the first time you get it wrong. So you answer it the second time by analyzing what the answer is and then get it correct. Not like that. Study well and answer these 15 questions. If you get these 15 questions right, or at least if you get these 13 questions right, you have a very strong chance to get an 8 out of 8 in the IR section. Also, another important tip. Out of the 12 questions, if you get 10 right and 2 wrong, you still have a very high chance of getting an 8 out of 8. Wrong answers do not mean that you will get something like 6 or a 4 or a 2 out of 8. So just be confident, go out there and answer the IR section with all that you have studied and with the practice that I've just told you. I'm pretty sure you're gonna get an 8 out of 8 in the IR section. So that was all in this video and I will meet you for the next video. If you have any doubts, any problems you can write down in the comments below and let me know how you like this video and if you have any difficulties with respect to any section in the GMAT exam I will be seeing you in the next video so till then take care be happy be safe and all the best